Between the summer of 1976 and the summer of 1977, New York City was gripped with fear by the serial killer known as the Son of Sam, David Berkowitz. On March the 8th, 1977, the ninth shooting victim of the Son of Sam and his third murder victim, Virginia Voskarichian, aged 19, was killed right opposite on the sidewalk in front of the building that we are now looking at, shot in cold blood at point-blank range. Berkowitz targeted young women, though on several occasions he also shot the male companions of these young women. Most of the crimes followed the same pattern, with a couple of exceptions including the aforementioned Virginia Voskarichian. A couple would be sat in the parked car, and completely unknown to them, Berkowitz would approach the car and shoot the occupants at point-blank range. On the occasions where his victims were not in a car, he simply walked up to them on the street, pulled out his gun, and shot them. The son of Sam became notorious in New York, for taunting and mocking the police and local media with letters, which began, began two months after the Voskarichian murder. However, the framework for Berkowitz's taunting behaviour had already begun. Despite living 25 miles away, when Berkowitz murdered Virginia Voskarichian, he was actually returning to the scene of the crime of his second murder victim who he had killed only five weeks prior, both murders occurring in the Tudor village in Forest Hills, Queens. On January the 30th, 1977, Christine Freund and her fiancé, John Deal, were sitting in Deal's car in front of the Forest Hills Inn, which is right in front of us, having just watched the movie Rocky. Like many other victims of the Son of Sam, neither victim saw their attacker. He simply walked up to the car and started shooting. Dill survived the shooting, but Freund became the second murder victim as she died at the hospital several hours later. Over the next four months, David Berkowitz murdered three more people, while shooting six more people in total. He was apprehended in August 1977, where he quickly confessed not only to his crimes, but also to hundreds of unsolved arson crimes throughout New York, with which he had not been implicated in. In May 1978, Berkowitz pleaded guilty to all shootings and murders, and was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. He became eligible for parole in 2002 and he has a parole hearing every two years. Berkowitz himself has stated that he believes that he should remain in prison for the rest of his life. David Berkowitz is now 67 years old and he has spent the last 42 years in jail. On July the 4th, 1917, a historic event happened in this location in Station Square, Forest Hills, Queens. Right in front of the Forest Hills train station. On a platform built in front of the balcony, the former President of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, delivered his 100% American unification speech to 3,000 onlookers in support of America's involvement in World War I. Here is some silent footage from that speech and how the area looked at the time. You will notice that the entrance to the train station remains unchanged to this day, 100 years later. You will also partially see some of the buildings in the area and the crowd is stood right where I am stood as I film this. Teddy Roosevelt was the 26th President of the United States of America. 
serving as president between 1901 and 1909, after he ascended from the vice president role upon the assassination of President William McKinley. Roosevelt was only 42 years old when he became president, which, even to this day, is still the youngest president of the United States. Roosevelt ran one further time for president in the election of 1912, when it appeared likely that he would not replace the, his presidential successor, William Taft, as the Republican Party nominee, Roosevelt created his own party called the Progressive Party. In the election of 1912, Roosevelt's Progressive Party finished second to the Democrat Woodrow Wilson, but his party had split Republican voters in half thereby handing Wilson an easy presidential victory. In the run-up to the 1912 election, an assassination attempt was made on Teddy Roosevelt when he was shot in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. While he had been shot in the chest, the bullet had first struck his eyeglass case before travelling through a 50-page speech that he had written. Despite having just been shot, Roosevelt demanded that his attempted assassin not be harmed, for which he likely would have been killed in short order. Instead, Roosevelt ordered the police to take the man into custody and ensure that no harm came to him. Roosevelt surmised that while bleeding from the chest wound, he showed no signs of the bullet having hit any organs. He then proceeded to speak for 90 minutes with blood seeping into his shirt. Imagine that in today's day and age. This is the view that Teddy Roosevelt would have had when he was addressing the crowd on that day. And before we close, have you noticed the building to the left there with the funny looking roof? That roof is meant to resemble a bicocket hat, the type of hat worn by Robin Hood, with the chimney serving as a feather. You won't find that little nugget in many history books. Now we will finish with a few more minutes of unseen footage from my trip to the Tudor village, starting off with a mural dedicated to the Ramones who were all from Forest Hills. Initially I had planned to do a different video in which this section would have been the beginning. However, halfway through filming, a guy stopped me on the street as he noticed me filming. Despite telling him that I was currently filming, he insisted on telling me how he planned to become a Twitch streamer and wanted my opinions. So I turned the camera off and subsequently decided that I would use this footage to finish off the Station Square area of Forest Hills in Queens, New York. Okay, that's what's happening. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.